province of Sindh, a small group of Pakistani politicians and military officers keep more than 1.5 million farmers in bonded slavery. So when your luck is bad enough to be born here, you hope that one day you'll cross paths with this small ambulance. In the van, a former cop and a doctor, Pakistan's Abraham Lincolns, two brave men, two courageous ones, who single-handedly are defying some of the country's most powerful men. Instead of giving me a long explanation, my new friends point out one example on the side of the road. Meet Zafar. Since last 12 years, he is working over here. 12 years, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And has he gotten any salary in those 12 years? No, no salary. So here you can see the exploitation These kids, this man, is wife, two children, they are working over here. Yeah. 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 Ten years old. Yeah, right? and he looks like of uh, six, six, five, six. Yeah, five, six years yeah. old. Yeah. आधा हाँ ना तो हाँ मतलब ही पांच साल का चारी तो करें साल तो बची ये लोग माल को और पूर्वा बकरी नहीं हाँ just like they lock up cattle in a stable we're in the same situation we'd like to go elsewhere the owners told us that we cannot leave we're not allowed to leave to do what go where we have no money no education there's no future for us we can only count on God and hopefully your organization. So to give back freedom and dignity to these enslaved women and men, Dr. Haider and Officer Sheik buy them back from their captors and set them up in villages built for them by a German NGO. There are four such villages in the province. The one they take me to is the most recent one. Here, uh, Mr. Nanji, he is the village elder. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. hello. Yes. And how many people are there in this village now? How many? At the moment, there are 130 families, if we count the families who've just been freed. That's 13 additional families. This is very beautiful, huh? All the, uh, it is the traditional. Traditional, yeah? What does it mean, uh, all these? Uh... The Bengals below the, uh, this knee. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, the, those who are unmarried, they can wear below them. Only below, yes. Yeah. Yes. But the full Bengals, they are the married ones. Married ones. All that mattered to the landlords was that we finished the work. Even if one of us was sick enough to die, we had to finish working before we could get help. Even if someone died, they made us finish the job before burying them. When they see a young girl from a poor family like ours, they molest her. When there's a wedding, the landlords often take the brides home with them and force them to spend the night. That's oppression. If the owner showed up here, face to face with me, I'd hit him really hard. The way he beat me, the way he oppressed me and my children, I'd do the same thing back to him. She seems like she's the, the strong woman. She's the fighter, right? If she sees the landlord, she's going to beat him up. And shake. <laughs> she's my student. Yeah, she's a student. And shake. look.
nice in this place. If you haven't seen Lahore, you haven't seen anything. Um, well, as you can see, Lahore is the city that never sleeps, and anything goes around here. And we're gonna go meet, you know, a real special kind of resident in Lahore. They're called Hijras. They're not men. They're not women. They're Hijras. To be Hijra in Pakistan is like walking fully clothed at a nudist colony. It's asking for trouble. Everyone looks at you and everyone despises you. These boys turned girls are a hodgepodge of societies unwanted. Hermaphrodites, transgenders, castrates, and also children who've been sold by their families. All of them have learned to embrace their womanhood with the help of an elder. They live with her as a family their whole life. I'm going to have to explain this to my girlfriend. The government used to employ them as village tax collectors. Today they dance at weddings and bless children, but people pay them more to get rid of them than out of compassion. Come out, come out, we'll dance for you. Well, what they're actually doing is that they go through the streets and they call out to people to ask them if they want them to dance for, for them. But it, here, in, in most women are covered usually, and so you wear a lot of makeup, and you know you're you're undressed. So if I didn't dress this way, no one would give me any money. Look, I have to wear short sleeves. I have to show my cleavage. That's what I have to do. It's a very difficult life I have here. If other Hizras show up here in our neighborhood, we have to show them who's the boss. Oh yes, we get into arguments all the time whenever they come here. We don't let any of them come and beg here. We grew up here. We can't just let anyone come in and take our livelihood. Of course, I'll break their legs. May God on his throne give you many sons so that I can come back here. In the family, when a son is born, we celebrate and invite hijras. Do they bring good luck to the future of the baby? Or yeah, and, and we give them alms as well for health and long life. The prayers of the hijras are answered faster, more quickly.